Mercedes Benz 200 manual, which I was I phoned you about. Yes. But the reconditioning is a bit more than expected, so I shall not be selling my 202 for the 123. Ah, okay. Um, this is a surprise video. <laughs> it's an anniversary video, and I'm surprising you. You're not scripted, but he's very good at improv. He's actually a stand-up comedian as well. Your name doesn't matter, neither does mine, because at the end of April, it was the 50th anniversary of something. Can you guess what it is? It can't be the one. Yes, yes, yes. Keep going. It can be the... Not the one, two, three. No. I'll give you a hint. Could be the one, one, six. Oh, the 103 engine. No, the one, one, oh. The 50th anniversary of the M110, or is it M110? What, what do you prefer? I usually say 110. Yeah. 110er, sagen die Deutschen. 110. And I had a script, uh, a, a crib sheet with all the specs, and I forgot it. How clever is that? So we're going to have to do this off by heart. Oh, it's 136 kilowatt. That's the top one. Yes, my 280 SE that would have been running today, but I managed to break the brand new petrol pump while trying to fit it yesterday. So that's why, why would we you do that. So the M110 engine was launched in end of April 1972, 50 years ago, for the 114 range or the Strich 8, the Dash 8. Um, but I even made a list of all the cars it came in. I forgot one or two. That's obviously also now by memory. Um, it was always the same capacity, uh, the same bore and stroke. They never upped the size or changed it. Maybe the tuners back then did, but Mercedes-Benz always made the same capacity. Yeah, they just changed the fuel injection. Mm. It went from a D-Jetronic to a, J, a, to K, a K jetronic K. Also, it had a Zorlex 4A1 car on some of the cars. There was a carburetor version. Yeah, well, that would probably be on, on one of the very, very last 108s. No, two, um, 108 never had the engine. 280S, W116. Which I had, which I sadly wrote uh, off. Did you know there was a W126 280S? That I didn't know. Yes, I did actually. Yeah, but not here. We no, not here. We only got the field engine. We only got the SE, because overseas you also got an SEL. Yes. So, the M110 was always 2,746. So technically, you have to round it down. It's a 2.7. It's but they called it a 280 engine. Yeah. And it's a mixed metal engine. So it's got a, an iron block. And an aluminum head. Aluminum head. And the thing... And that, twin cam. That is the thing that I that puzzles me about this engine. Even though I was negative five years old when it came out or something. It's a double overhead cam design. But it's only got two valves per cylinder. In a, in a V-shape apparently. Uh, and it's a cross-flow cylinder head. That I remember. Our two valves per cylinder is technically more reliable. Yeah. Just in general, just for maintenance and wear and tear and upkeep. Yeah. Speaking of which, one of the most reliable engines they ever made. Um, duplex chain. So the timing chain is very good. As with most Mercedes. Okay, um, we're not talking about the 271. That, yeah, that, no that, no that, modern engines. No, 271 <laughs> is a very, very sensitive subject. So. Why I also wanted to do this video is because some people absolutely adore this engine for many reasons, whereas others don't. They don't like the ticking idle noises. I like the fact that it sounds slightly agricultural when it starts. I like And one thing you should know, if you're considering a car with this engine, they rev very high because they did come with uh, four-speed automatics, four-speed manual and five-speed manual, but at cruising speeds, at 110, 120 kilometers an hour, or what, 70 miles an hour, they're doing 4,000 RPM, or three and a half. Uh, so, um, yeah. so if you are considering one, completely normal. These engines can do four and a half thousand RPM all day long. And yes, they are very thirsty, but that's comparatively speaking, or comparably, right? Comparatively speaking. Comparatively speaking. Um, if you're just cruising along, it's fine. And the benefit of that is, that harks from the old days. If your revs are high at cruising speeds, you don't need to suckle, uh, what's it called? struggle struggle up a hill because you've got enough momentum also in the motor. Yeah, I'm so, thinking now, yeah. if at 110 in fourth gear, I get 
I've got some 10 kilometers to a liter, which is for what it is, it's actually really, really, really good. That's what a big turbo diesel SUV does nowadays. And I'm being, I'm going to be honest, in town, yeah. because that bit, that slightly asthmatic engine in a big S class, in a one two three, it's a dream. Yes. But in a one two six, it's a bit too low on power. Um, I've never dropped below eight kilometers to a liter in town, oh. ever. Okay. Um, okay, granted, driving like a normal person, not yes. Seeing how quickly I can get to 60 constantly. So, let's get back to the, all the different cars that it was in. So, it started with the 114. Yes. You got a 280 carburetor, 280C mm -hmm. uh, cabrio. <laughs> not cabrio, what's it? Coupe. No, coupe, thank you. Uh, 280E, right? Yes. Then it came into the 107. There was a 280SL and a yes. 280SLC, which is actually quite a rare car. I wouldn't mind one of those. We never got them though. Not did here. we? No. We didn't get them in Ooh. South Africa. Hey? No, we didn't. So we got the 350? Yes. The 450. Lots of 450s. I have one. Yeah. Um, it's currently not moving, but I have one. Then, oh. Love the sound. Sorry, sir. It is nice. Now, on the 126, I would have had to do that two days earlier. Ah. Well, I, I can go into a second, then it makes a lot of noise. But I don't want to rev it too much. Oh, I love that sound. But before we get to that, um, 116, the S class of the 70s. The 280S. Yeah, the 280S. With... My folks had one, you had one. 280SE. 280SE. SEL, which we didn't get. No. Um, then came the 123, which you also got a 280. I thought the 280 was the old M130 engine, but it's not. It's the carburetor version of the M110. I thought it was the 130 engine. I thought so too. We because your because that. because your 230. Yes, that was the old 114 engine. Humpy's 114 engine. Right? Yes. And the 280E, that was the 110 engine. And yes. then, um, oh yes, then came the 126. You've got the 280 AC, SEL. The one I forgot was the 280S, which we didn't get. Oh, no. and one more we forgot. W461. 280 GE. Awesome. Yes. Nice. Awesome. That's a that'll, great that'll engine. That'll be thirsty. But that'll go nicely. Yeah, but on the other hand, if you buy a Galinda Wagen, I don't think fuel economy is the thing you want. Or speed. About. No. Um, so and now, we need to touch on the on the, the pros and the cons because many years ago I think it was Automotor and Sport in Germany the the unkindest thing they wrote about it I think it was them I don't want to accuse them was that it is a jack of all trades but a master of none the M1108 yes but that saying actually goes further further did you know that jack of all trades master of none but it's still better than a master of one so this engine does everything okay-ish but not it doesn't excel in revs or power or consumption. It does all of it sort of fairly well, which is probably why they used it so long. Well, I think it's a testament to Mercedes-Benz engi engines in general. Yes. Okay, grant anything before 2000. That's a conversation for a different day. Yes. Anything Podcast before... coming up soon. Yeah, we have to. <laughs> um, I love the longevity of pre-2000 Mercedes-Benz engines. Yes. And the 110 is an example. It has lived through two E-class generations, two S-class generations. Yes. The SL, okay, that was one of the longest, the 107 is Still the 107 generation. Second longest running S, yeah. the G-Wagon. And, and the G-Wagon. Yep. Good engine. So it's, it, it has, you are talking about a nearly, nearly 20 year lifespan yep. on an engine. Yes. And that's what I love about Mercedes-Benz in general, pre-2000, is the longevity of engines and gearboxes. Nice color. No, I like the color as well. <laughs> uh, we love 202s, we love 210s, we love 208s. We love anything pre-2000. Yes. I, I do like things in like up to the mid-2000s. Um, now, your opinion. What is the worst thing about an M110 engine? It is an engine that I do feel should not have done service in certain models. Okay. I think the fuel injection 280 uh -huh. engine, so for example, in very late 116 models, um, your 107 models, yes. and obviously in your 126 models, it's slightly asthmatic. Um, and what I mean by that, I'm very happy doing 110 in fourth gear, never exceeding that. You're good with that. Most people, however, some people might not. However, there's always that thing my father told me about. You need a bit of oomph when you're in trouble. Yes. For example, you 
are overtaking someone but the person from the oncoming lane is going too quickly and you need that extra bit of immediate yeah. that oomph. So as a 280SE126 owner, the one con is nice MGTC. <laughs> MG. um, you need yeah. to plan your overtakes. Yes, you yes. have to plan your overtakes because it does, it sounds great. Yeah. It, once it, it I, I compare one Demonstration. One. The thing is, it will get there. I won't redline it, but sorry to interrupt you. I was seven years old when my folks bought this car, so I grew up in that back seat. And I remember my old man, when we drove to Swakopmund, which we did once a month at least, he would overtake, but he would not lift. He would redline this thing at six and a half thousand RPM, just because he could. And oh, that's probably been... the reason why I love these engines and these cars. Um, so con, a con is, especially in your S-Class models, Yes. I had to stop and mix it very tough. Um, but especially in your S class models, 116 or 126, plan your overtakes. Yeah. Um, make always make sure you have space because I think a 110 engine, I think the best comparison is like a steam locomotive. It takes a bit of time. Once it gets going, yes. it doesn't stop. Yeah. But you need to be patient to get there. Yes. Um, so that is the only con. Um, fuel consumption is relative. It is indeed. Um, and the tanks tend to be quite big. The actual tank of the cars that they come in. Yeah. I mean, even this, the Eco has a 70 litre, I think. Yeah, my car has a, the 126 is a 93 litre. 90 something litre tank, yeah. Um, so, but, but it's relative. I didn't buy my 126 for fuel economy. I bought it because I firstly like 126s and I like the 280 engine because my yes. 116 had the same engine, just carbureted, and I love the engine. Um, so fuel consumption, it's, if you buy it to be a daily, yeah, probably not. Probably not the best idea. Um, they are very daily engines though, you can daily run Absolutely. them. Absolutely, they can do mileage as well. Yeah. Right? Which, um, I, I know we're still on your negatives, but because it's a mixed metal engine, if the cylinder head warps, you're in for quite a bit of work. Yes. Right? Yes, because you have to matchy matchy skim it and all sorts of engineering wonderments, right? But once again, I know we are technically on con, so yeah. we've said fuel economy, which is relative. Yes. Um, when it comes to overtaking or doing high speeds, plan, time it, because it will take a bit of time to gather up speed. <laughs> yes. Um, the aluminium head can be problematic. It is a con, but I won't high. I won't rank it as a high con. Because once again, it is an old Mercedes-Benz motor and they are built to go forever. Yeah. Um, you really need to bugger up to warp ahead on a 1-1. You really need to It is a con, but it's, 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 very, it's very rare that it will happen. Um, and then, I think another con would be long term, even though it has done service in so many cars. It is obviously not as prevalent as for example a 102 four cylinder motor um, so parts at some stage will right. become problematic at the moment we're quite lucky um, in South Africa we've got places called Midas and AutoZone obviously the US also has AutoZone and a couple of good uh, used yeah. spare um, places or scrap you, can, you can go to Midas today and get a service kit for this engine yeah. good spark plugs, oil filter, petrol filter, air filter so at the moment we're still very very lucky because it's not like Mercedes only bought two of these engines. Um, so there we are lucky, but obviously at some point that tap will be closed. Um, so it is a con, I think if you want to be smart, maybe stock up on things like falters. Oil falters and petrol falters. One. Um, obviously spark plugs would be, spark plugs at least not a problem, but things like, if you really are that nervous, and especially if you have a low mileage model, yeah. Um, even though I'm not a fan of garage queens, but if you have one, and um, here we can probably demonstrate without breaking the law what you were talking about. Response is first, and then it goes. There was an attempt at wheel spin, but you see, it, like you say, a steam locomotive. It builds up, and the shifts are very delayed. They take forever, but they're very smooth. They are very smooth. And, and like I said, once it gets there, it gets there. Oh, and uh, apparently there's a speed bump right here. Let's see if there's a speed bump. Yeah, I think that was one. So yeah. that is the benefit, never mind the engine. This class or this era of Mercedes-Benz is here is the world's biggest speed bump. No, there's a worse one. 
and we can't actually feel it. But these cars are super, super comfortable. Same with the 126. Yeah. Which is another disadvantage. The, the, the engine is a bit heavy because of the high end block and it takes a while to warm up. Right. I don't know. I'm okay because I because I smoke. So what I usually do is when I idle my one two six to get uh, the temperature, I've so worked out. Where are you going with this? Um, no, 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 no. So you I let smoke it warm up. No, yeah, so no. I've okay. worked out for me to roll a cigarette because I roll my own cigarettes, yes. and it's cigarettes, not anything else. So calm down in the comment section. I'm not twelve people. Um, for me to roll a cigarette and smoke it halfway, it's up to temperature. Uh, or at a comfortable running temperature, so this that Land Rover's air suspension is not happy. Um, so, say, eight minutes? And once again, eight minutes is not really that long of a time. And if you really worried, you would have to leave eight minutes earlier. Now, advantages. Everyone's going to hate me for this, and you will edit this in. It sounds better than the BMW Straight 6. Oh, I love a BMW straight six. It sounds better. It sounds better stock. 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 Yes. Stock. Stock. I might give you that one. I stock. I'm, I'm biased towards these engines. But a, a stock BMW. Mm, what I is the think you might have a point. A stock 110 engine, whether yeah. it's in a 123 or 114 or 116 or 126 or 107. I keep on forgetting Sounds and I nice. keep on forgetting the Glenda Vargan series number. I think this one has a stainless steel exhaust in it. Though, um, because the mild steel one rotted away, even in winter where the car came from. No, that's why I need to get a new muffler for mine. Uh, After I've done the petrol pump a uh, second time. Um, and a, stock. a 110 engine stock sounds better than a BMW straight six and I will die on this hill <laughs> I will you die on this hill that. also about your other favorite engine the M triple one which is the greatest four cylinder ever made not only by Mercedes-Benz <laughs> but I think closely in general okay let's not get distracted yeah. um, longevity is an obvious plus that is a hole um, definitely <laughs> um, it is for example mine mine now has 200 and 20,000 kilometers on the clock, which is obviously yes. not a lot for old Mercedes. We always Shall we deploy the hooter on this car? Thank you. I don't know, um, but I'm not, no, I don't know if, are they moving? They out are of moving the way? Or, No, but. This is not a standard hooter, by the way. No, I figured. On the other hand, I sold, I sold a 123 recently with an air hooter as well. Air horn. It was yeah, kind of fun. Yes. Um, scared the living hell out of taxis. Yes. I had a klaxon in one of my Land Rover Defenders, my little 90 bucky. Nice. <laughs> um, we are off topic. So, yes. longevity. Definitely. Sound. Yes. Um, ease, ease of, of service. Ease of maintenance or, or service. Because they, there's so much space. It's very yeah. easy to work on them. It's not... Okay, uh, don't take me into account because I managed to break a brand new petrol pump before right. tightening it. And I don't know my left hand from my right hand, especially with their spanners in it. Um, I'm going to add a, a, a wild card into it. I think it's a beautiful looking engine with those grooves on the on the tappet yeah, or Yeah, I think if, if you whatever. make the effort with the, some 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 chrome or soft steel polish, and it's got a little star. The front. It just looks beautiful. I think it's a nice. Look My OC, thing is, from an OCD point of view, I do love the symmetry in general. Bikini because it's beach, yes, top rated South African beach. It's tiny, but it's good. Not today, though. I'll just have it. Um, <laughs> I do like the symmetry of the engine. Obviously, yes. obviously the engine you've got the, the air cleaner slightly to the side and whatnot. Yeah. But in general, it's a very, very symmetrical engine, which is very, very quintessential. It looks very German. Yeah. Um, very precise. Everything there makes sense. Everything is in perfect working order. By the way, this very, very lovely house at the end, with yes. one of the most beautiful views. It's owned by the Catholic Church. Nuns live there. So in Gordon's Bay, one of the houses with the most beautiful views are owned by nuns. It's called End House. Yes. Nice. All right. If um, I could, I would join a nunnery because that's a lovely house. <laughs> Ooh, different topic for a different day. Now, uh, closing thoughts before we go to beauty shots. Your your conclusion of an M110 engine. Um, I think even within the Mercedes-Benz community, whether club members or not, I don't think it gets the amount of love and respect that it deserves. It's true. 
there are people who genuinely dislike it. I will go a step. Noise, I it? will go a step further and once again state that it sounds better than BMW Straight Six Dog. I don't care how many people slaughter me in the comment section. Um, Have we forgotten? 2,746 cc, obviously naturally aspirated petrol inline six cylinder or straight six double overhead cam but that only drives one valve per cylinder so it's one intake one exhaust valve it's a 12 valve a 12 valve um the last models such as mine it had yeah. 136 kilowatt that's the top spec the lowest was 105 yes sorry to interrupt they also spoke of a low and high compression but that's 50 years ago. The low one was 8.7 and the high is 9.021, which to me is not very high. I thought 10 and up is high. Mm. But those are the compression ratios. The bore and stroke I wrote down, I don't have that off the top of my head. We'll put it in here. Yeah, you could fit a little box um, with all. Yeah, and I I think, then how much cooling and oil it takes I and think all of that. Torque that didn't figure, really change. I think torque figure was about 275 Newton meters. No, 240 was the top one. From about 220 Which to is still 240. Not bad. That's okay. 240 Newton meters. Take into account 240 Newton meters for late 70s, early 80s was good. Yes. Good. Well, thank you for watching. If you have any more suggestions or comments or whatever in the bottom, uh, like, subscribe, share with all your ex girlfriends or boyfriends. And um, agree with me in the comment section that it we, sounds better than a BMW engine. <laughs> we are going to do a W123 documentary. Promise we will with your car too. Yes. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you. Bye.